of the nations in Midtown Plaza, Rochester, New York, where each passing hour is gaily saluted in the carnival spirit that is universal with people everywhere. And I'll acquaint you with... There are many ingredients, of course, some sheer delight, like the electronically controlled marionettes of our fabled timepiece. Each passing hour, they dance around the clock to the bright tunes of different countries around the world. step, so to speak, since the construction of the St. Lawrence Seaway. The Great Lakes have become the fourth seacoast for the United States, and Rochester its westernmost port on Lake Ontario. The Genesee River, with headwaters in the Appalachian ridges of Pennsylvania, and one of the few rivers in North America flowing north, passes right through the heart of the city. Surrounding Monroe County, and the other counties up the Genesee Valley constitute a natural economic area, with Rochester as the focal point. Genesee is an Indian word meaning beautiful valley, and still today, no description more aptly fits this area of the world. Beautiful, just simply beautiful valley, as if no adjectives in any language, Iroquois or otherwise, could compete with what nature has wrought here. The river twists torturously at the Letchworth Gorge, as if fighting its way north, and there are legends at every turn. Every clump of rocks has its myths from Indian times. Some fanciful giant is heralded as creating the Finger Lakes with the dredging fingers of his right hand, an artist's hand, surely and such haunting names the Indians gave them. Skinny Atlas, Owasco, Cayuga, Seneca, Cuca. To know that the artist giant was actually the glacier doesn't destroy the wonder of them in the least. Canandaigua, Honeyoy, Canadice, Hemlock, Kinesis. Certainly the work of an artist glacier in any case. Also a bountiful glacier, for the slopes here are rich with the soil it deposited, rich and carefully tended. Here are the Bristol Hills, the famous wine country of western New York, grapes in gorgeous profusion. Apples, you haven't lived, friend, until you've sunk your teeth into the splendor of a western New York apple. The good land attracted the first settlers here little more than 150 years ago. Still today, you will find freestanding homesteads cherished from generation to generation. The cobblestone construction is characteristic. Cobblestone carted up the valley from Lake Ontario to build to last. Farms in the area are completely electrified now, of course and as modern in all the conveniences of good living as the methods of farming the surrounding acreage. Signs of the past, historical markers in the towns and villages of the valley give further evidence of the building fervor in the early days of settlement. Early 19th century inns, remodeled to fit today's requirements, still attract the customers. Old landmarks, adapted to modern business ventures, and charmingly so. There's a gentle respect, place after place, for the architectural heritage of the valley, a tender reverence for previous periods, 
the same as that afforded the sheltering shade trees. People here have made peace with the past, the same as they have with the natural setting of this area of the world. Old mansions are now museums. But don't let such historical preservation beguile you. People here can be tough, too. They can be tough with a tree when surgery is necessary. They can be tough with a tree. They can be tough with a house. They can be tough with a city when surgery is necessary. Tough, yet tender at the same time, in the manner of skilled professionals. Have you ever heard of Genesee fever? Historically, it was probably some kind of rash encountered by Colonel Nathaniel Rochester when he decided to utilize the water power of the Genesee Falls and build a settlement here. Today, Genesee fever best describes the rash of activity that has continued in this area of the world from the frontier forward. There has never been any nonsense about the purpose of the city or the nine counties of the Rochester economic area. Quite simply, it is considered a place to make a profit as pleasantly as possible. The community is fully aware of the financial facts of life and the methods of making an economic area prosperous. Oh, I had a mule. Her name was Sal, 20 years on the Erie Canal. That much-chanted and tall-tailed waterway was pronounced here, i.e., back in the 1820s, when it was the main trade and travel artery in America. Today, it provides recreational facilities, fishing and boating, as well as many a pleasant picnic area for family outings. The present barge canal carries cargoes of grain and petroleum, slow freight, and is still serving in America's network of inland waterways. Rochester was one of the first boom towns in America. But the E.R.I.E. started, the railroads continued. Faster freight and passenger service. Bonanza business right in the heart of Rochester. What the railroads continued, the automobile climaxed. Today, a portion of the old E.R.I.E forms a sentimental segment in the complex of arterial highways and expressways that link the heart of the city to the New York State segment of the transcontinental thruway. Tough yet gentle surgery for the old E.R.I.E. The important thing, of course, is that the heart of the city has a booming beat, stronger than ever before. Times change. And you either change your city to fit them, or they'll change your city, often unpleasantly, more often unprofitably. Rochester has made its peace with the automobile. Is it practical to do otherwise? Does it make any civic sense whatsoever to cuss the tyranny of wheels and the insolent chariots, instead of getting together to plan a workable solution for traffic congestion?